Howdy everybody, thanks for joining me. In this episode, we're going to be carving this wooden mouse lure. So let's get right into it. I've worked out a quick sketch here for uh, what I'm thinking on this mouse lure. And uh, it's about two inches long. Well, it's exactly two inches long from the nose to where the tail starts. And then the tail will be a little bit longer than the length of the body. I've just got a, kind of a large mass here that I'm going to use for my buoyancy and I can get my weight in the bottom. Um, and then legs, I'm going to kind of keep close to the body because uh, I don't want them interfering with the, with the lure. Uh, as far as action goes, since this is a one-piece lure, um, I'm thinking I'm going to put a, a small lip here that's maybe almost vertical. I don't want a lot of action to it. I want just a little tight wiggle. I'm mostly what I want is for it to create a wake on the top and for this tail to kind of swish back and forth as it goes through the water. As far as materials go, I think I'm going to make this tail out of uh, leather because I think that'll hold up the best. I know there's a lot of lures out there that they use uh, soft plastics um, and I'm sure that's great, um, but I'm, I'm looking back at you know, old lures, um, antique lures, and a lot of times they use leather or a piece of string. A little bit unsure about proportions and um, the shape on this mouse because it's, it's very different from what I normally do. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, take some of my modeling clay that I used um, for mold making, and I'm going to make a little clay model first sort of as a reference for uh, when I do start carving wood. I think we're pretty close here, um, at least for the clay molding portion. It's a little bit rough in places, um, but the point of this uh, little exercise is to give me a better idea of the proportions and the shape of the mouse and uh, just give me a better feel for it before I start carving it out of wood. I think it looks pretty good. So from here, I'm going to start carving this out of wood and then I'll have this as a reference point to go by.
I've got my cutout started here. I'm going to get a little bit more detail around this uh, area with the feet. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in my vise. And then I'm going to use a, um, one of these rat tail uh, files, rasp, so that I can get in where I want to get. That lets me get down into those little curves a little bit better. We're going to do the same thing here on the head. I'm going to leave a little bit more around the ears. Uh, I can always carve them down, but I feel like I might want the ears to pop up slightly more than what I've got on my sketch. So in order to make sure that I get um, a symmetrical lure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half on the center line, put my fold on the center. This is a trace. And then instead of tracing on this other side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over. That way both of my sides are going to be exactly the same. Sometimes what I'll do to get uh, a rounded shape that I need is I'll use a piece of PVC pipe. You could also use a dowel, a wooden dowel or something like that. Wrap your sandpaper around it and that lets you get into those little shapes you need.
I decided to take advantage of this mild fall weather and moved my carving outside. It won't be too long before winter sets in and drives us indoors. Every time I carve on the porch, it reminds me of learning to whittle when I was a kid. Those summer days spent with family, I will never forget. Let me show you where I'm at. Kind of sketched on uh, the feet here. I'm down to the, the real fine details. And I've tried to kind of sketch out the pads of the, the back feet a little bit. And so I'm going to do a little bit of carving on that. You can see here on the paws I've got the fingers put in there kind of like it's paddling swimming so let's uh let's get in there with the fine detail and and see if we can get those pads put on I just wanted to show these side by side a little bit. Um, they're not identical, but I really think this clay figure did help me along the way here, trying to figure out exactly, you know, what proportions I should have and, and just the subtle shapes of a mouse. Anyway, now that we've got that done, we can uh, move on to uh, wood burning the, the hair onto the, onto the body. Okay, with the help of my model here we're going to take a look at fur and how it uh hold on there you go feeding her i'm feeding her treats so she'll behave um but we can see how fur works here so obviously it runs back along the back here but along the leg see it changes direction and kind of goes that way. Around and then over. Okay. Here, there's another bacon. She only agrees to help if I give her treats. Okay. And then let's look around face a little bit. It kind of goes down on the nose around. And then around the eyes. The eyes is going to be the tricky part. Thank you very much for helping. There's your treat. So obviously we're going to have the fur running back like this along the back. In between the ears. And down the nose. Then it kind of goes, it parts and goes around the eye. A little bit like that. Okay. And then generally, generally it kind of washes down. A bit and then comes back up. Now here's where it gets tricky because the fur actually goes down here 
Actually, I, I don't think that's going to be too big of a deal. We'll just part it. So I'm going to start with this uh, blade on my wood burner um, because I think it'll be probably my best bet. And then I'm starting at kind of a low temperature here because I don't want to I don't want to screw up and have way too much heat right off the bat. So let's let's start low. Let's take a look at what we got here. Starting with some of this stainless steel lock wire. This is the 0 0.041 diameter. I'm going to cut two pieces. I believe I was originally going to have two hook hangers, but I think given the size of this, I'm going to just go to one because I'm going to have the anchor point on the front and then I'm going to have a lip here and then I'm going to have the tail, of course, coming off the back. So that doesn't leave me a lot of real estate to put two hooks without them getting tangled in one another all the time. So. I'm just going to do one, one belly hook. Um, yeah, probably just somewhere in the middle like that. I think I want to angle this though, because it'll give me a little bit more um, embedment and it'll also change the angle of the pull so that it's not just, so it can't just be pulled straight out, right? If you've got it in an angle in the wood, um, you got the wood helping you a little bit more. There we go. Let's uh, talk about the lip. So let's put a mark right in there. That's kind of where I want it to be. Because what that'll do, if I, if I put it right there, that will give me enough room to get in to paint and do everything I need to do around the, the, the pause here. If I put it right up against the paws, I won't be able to finish that very easily. So I'm giving myself a little bit of room. Putting this in my clamp, I'm, I'm avoiding my ears. I'm not putting it too tight. And as you can see, I've padded my vise with some duct tape, a few layers of duct tape. Um, that helps. Uh, prevent denting of wood. I mean, you can still dent it, but 
it helps. So I'm gonna eyeball this, which is dangerous, but, and you can't see this from, from your angle, but I'm gonna take my blade and I'm gonna make it parallel with the vise, okay? And I'm gonna start with just a straight cut. Okay. I had a comment from a subscriber, Joe Layton, and uh, he uh, suggested that I use those paper uh, fingernail files that you get at the box stores for doing wire slots. And I think it would also work well for this. I just don't happen to have any in the shop uh, at the moment. So I'm folding sandpaper, but I think that would also work really well. So thanks, Joe, for the tip. At any rate, we're going to widen that up a little bit. Oh, a little more. There we go. All right, good enough. Let's look at something real close here. Since I've got this unique situation where I've cut actually into my hole there, you can see how when I'm twisting that, it's augering that um, epoxy down the hole, right? And that's why I twist it in rather than just shoving it in straight because if you just shove it in it wipes all that epoxy off and uh, doesn't doesn't hold it but if you twist it like this it pushes that resin down into the down into the hole where you need it I'm about to coat this in polyurethane to seal it but before I do that there's a couple of areas that I am concerned about strength wise that I want to reinforce a little bit so I'm going to put some super glue on the paws and the back feet and probably the ears just because I have concerns about the strength of the wood um, and this will help stiffen that up a little bit. Do a quick loop like that off the nose. We're gonna dip it in there. Let it drip for a few minutes and then what I'm probably going to do is uh, wipe it gently with a paper towel here and make sure that my uh, detail inside my fur and whatnot doesn't get uh, clogged with, with this um, polyurethane because I want to maintain as much of that fine detail as possible.
So I've got the lip cut out and uh, I'm going to set that aside for now. Uh, the next thing I need to make is the tail and for that I've got a little scrap piece of leather. Um, you could use string um, as well but I, I want to use leather. I think it's going to be a little bit more durable and probably a little bit more realistic. Um, so I've got this scrap piece here and what I want to do is I want to make it a little bit longer than the length of the body. So this is a two inch, yeah, two inch. So I'm probably going to go three maybe. Yeah, I'm going to cut three because that'll give me some uh, to work with as far as some of it's going to have to be glued into the tail section here. So by the time I do that, I think that'll give me a nice length. Uh, and also you got to keep in mind from a fish's perspective, they're going to see that tail on the water and um, hopefully identify that as a mouse. So it's going to need to taper. After sanding on this for a while and working with it, this is what I wound up with. Uh, it's not perfect, but it uh, is more rounded than it was. And uh, I think it will do what I need it to do. It also has that kind of fuzzy quality to it, like a, like a real mouse's tail, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to epoxy this tail into place, but before I do that, what I want to do is I'm going to put some super glue in this uh, hole that I've drilled because I want to waterproof that. I'm afraid of the, the leather wicking moisture into the lure, so let's waterproof that first. Yeah, sits on top nicely, but it looks like it could hold quite a bit of weight. You want weight not only to keep the lure upright, but you also want it uh, to help give the lure some stability. As you're pulling it through the water, um, if it's too light, it'll kind of want to maybe rotate or skip along the top. So you need some, need some weight there to hold it down in the water. <clears throat> now, admittedly, right now... Um, I didn't intend to put that much of an angle on that lip. Um, I was eyeballing it and I got too aggressive with my, my angle. So what that means is if this starts diving or if it starts doing something like that, what I'm going to have to do is shorten that uh, enough to where I still get the side to side motion, but it doesn't, it doesn't try to dive. Okay. To start with, I've got an assortment of lead weights. Uh, these are the smallest ones that I made.
All right, I've got my lip taped off here, and I think I'm going to start with the tail, the leather. Um, and what I'm going to try first is I'm going to try this pinata ink, and I'm going to try the white on the bottom. And, uh, and then on the top, I'd like to do kind of a brownish black, maybe. Maybe get in this kind of color range, possibly. I don't know. We'll just see what we come up with. But let's start with white. Just apply it directly and see if we can get a color change out of it. It's just completely soaking it up, but I think I'll eventually completely saturate the leather and then maybe enough of that pigment will pile up on there to, to stick. Now on the top, I'm going to brush a little bit of this uh, sun bright yellow on there just to give it a little bit, of, little bit more of that brown hue, hopefully. All right, and then the next thing I want to do is add some of this black over that yellow. Opaque white. step I'm going to use some transparent black and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush that over all of the fur You can uh, kind of do whatever you want paint wise here I mean there's no right or wrong in my opinion you could do any color you wanted I'm, I'm gonna go for a little bit more of a realistic kind of field mouse color so I'm gonna add a little bit of opaque white to that black and I'm gonna mix up a gray I'm gonna kind of try and dry brush a little bit I'll get my uh, proper technique down eventually here. Just kind of fading that white up, uh, the, the white belly, and then fading it up into that gray area a little bit. Next step, we're going to put some transparent light brown on the sides and the back. faint black stripe down the back. Just like that. I want to mix up a little bit of a kind of a pink color. You can see we can see that we're starting to get something kind of like that here in the ears. But for the paws, the ears, and around the nose, uh, we need kind of a, a little bit of a fleshy pink color. So let's start with a little, a little red, a little white, of course. Hint of it on there. This 
light brown in there. Yeah, that might be pretty close. Yeah. last detail I want to install right before I clear coat is the eyes. Now I thought about this for a long time about how I could get a decent looking eye on this mouse and what I finally came up with is uh, these little sewing pins that you can get. Right? And I found some black ones and those will make a really good looking eye I think. Okay, let's tear that. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.